Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Sun Woodworks here on my YouTube channel. My name is Caleb, and thanks for dropping by. It's been a bit since I've narrated a video, and I'm excited to get back to talking. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Hope that you will hit that subscribe button after you feel like it's worth it. For those of you who have been watching, you'll know that this is the 7th, maybe 6th, no actually 7th or 8th, episode pertaining to cutting up an oak tree in North County, Santa Barbara County uh, with my chainsaw. Now, I've got to admit, I have a lot of oak wood at this point, and you're going to see here at the end just how much oak wood that I have. Some would say that it's too much oak wood, but whom can say that one can have too much oak wood, if you know what I mean? Because when a tree falls and comes into your life, you gotta take advantage of it. You gotta cut it up and use it for woodworking projects and make beautiful things with it. It's like, why wouldn't you do that? You know what I mean? So that's what I've been doing. All right, guys, let's do some sawing. So over the course of about two months, I spent almost every weekend uh, driving up to the North County, which is about a hour drive from my house, and sawing, or at least one day every weekend. Maybe not the whole weekend, just one day. And uh, the benefit was great. The, uh, the payoff has been awesome. I have a stack of, of lumber, and you're going to see that at the end if you stick around. As I've mentioned in some of my other videos, the use of the Alaskan chainsaw mill that I have attached to my steel chainsaw is not necessarily traditional. And some people would say that you're gonna burn out the chainsaw uh, quite quickly by using it in the manner that I am using it. And they are not necessarily wrong, those people who would say those things, because the reality is, is that I did do some damage to this chainsaw by using it so hard. Uh, there is a video in this series where I have to fix the uh, Watch because I totally blew it out and I've also done some other damage to the saw because I've been using it so hard but the good thing is is that I've learned how to really use my chainsaw well and how to fix it and I get slabs like this which for those of you who know how much slabs can cost uh, they're a lot and they can make tables that sell for a lot for those of you who have done such a thing. All that being said, I am not necessarily a huge proponent of doing it the way that I am doing it because if I had all the money in the world, I would get a bigger chainsaw or I would have a bandsaw mill that I could pull behind my truck. I'd also have a forklift and probably a tractor and a bunch of other things to make this whole process a lot easier because as you can see, this was not necessarily easy and if you can't lift big slabs and slide them into the back of your truck then it's probably not possible to do it the way that I'm doing it. There have been a number of moments during the process of cutting up this oak tree where I've thought to myself wow youth is wasted on the young and not that I'm old or really even that young but I feel that. I really do. I feel it in my bones. Now for those of you who are still sticking around and watching this video right now, I'm excited to announce that I'll be releasing some more videos in the future on how to do slabbing, uh, but with a different tree. A walnut tree. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get back to this stuff that we're talking about, that we're looking at right here. This oak tree that I'm cutting up with my steel chainsaw, Farm Boss 271, with an Alaskan chainsaw mill from Grandberg International. Recommend. But also, if you have a lot of money, get a bigger chainsaw. Get an MS881 and put a really big mill on there. Whew, that would be sick. Wow. But really, the only thing that I'm trying to get you to take home from this video and from all the other videos in this series is that when there's a tree that falls down, don't just chip it up. Don't do that. Cut it up and use it for something cool because it takes a long time to grow a tree and 
for it to build up all of that character and that grain and yeah just do it come on but it does take a lot of work so i'm gonna warn you <laughs> if you want to do it be ready be ready for putting in the labor because uh it's dusty and it's so much fun i love it i love it and the best part is is that most people are just trying to get the fallen tree off of their property and so you can work with them to harvest the wood and potentially make a table for them and then take the rest of the wood for yourself or maybe leave a few slabs for them who knows there's usually a lot to go around when a tree comes down especially if it's an old tree so just you know make it happen imagine bringing a slab like this home that you can make a table with a dining room table with and your family would be so stoked to sit around that how cool would that be so I'm going to highly encourage you to go watch the rest of the videos in this series. This is the last one. But uh, do that and also hit the subscribe button um, so that you stay tuned for all of the other videos that I'll be putting out or have put out. Uh, i got lots in the library that you can go check out. I also did quite a few cookies as I call them, but slabs from the round section of the tree uh, and going perpendicular to the length of the tree, like the other slabs, if that makes any sense. I first had to ensure that the uh, log was flat so that I could use my elastic chainsaw mill on the uh, face flat portion of that log to get those cookies. Now, I guess the reason I call them a cookie is because they're round and they kind of look like a cookie, but they're not, obviously. If you have another recommendation for what to call this type of slab, uh, round slab, let me know. But um, this one was a little bit uh, rough, but the rest are a little less rough, and uh, in the end I'll have to flatten them all out with some sort of router, router flat make jig, or if I had a huge drum sander I could maybe do that, but I don't. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to use these for some tables or something, um, maybe even some big cutting boards. Uh, and uh, I'm actually already working on a project with one of these right now that's uh, got a lot of black epoxy. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely put out some videos on that at some point. Now that the wood from this valley oak tree has dried uh, for just about a year, uh, I can see what it's done. And uh, it's definitely a very brittle wood that uh, has pulled apart a lot. Uh, over the time since I first cut it um, and it will require a lot of uh, epoxy or joints probably like bow tie joints something like that um, but it's still really really beautiful wood and I'm excited to see all the projects that I'll be uh, using it for in the future for those of you who are still watching this video thank you so much for sticking around to eight and a half minutes into this project I uh, hope you're enjoying this content. Uh, if you have any recommendations for some things that I could use these slabs uh, on project-wise, let me know. Put those up in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Even if you're a troll, you can put up some crazy comment uh, down there in the comment section. Uh, and we'll see if I... Uh, respond no i i will respond i will respond to every comment so comment i'm excited to uh, announce that i'll be releasing some more videos on some other trees that i've been cutting up this last year and this year uh so stay tuned there's lots of good things coming to second Sun woodworks in the future so make sure to hit the subscribe button and check out my instagram check out my tiktok check out the shorts that i have for this channel there's lots of exciting woodworking projects going on. I'm also very curious to hear if there are people out there in Southern California who have worked with this type of valley oak uh, wood in the past. There's a lot of these trees around in Southern California, but they're not like all the other oak trees that are around. Um, it is a valley oak is the best way that I have uh, learned to refer to this type of tree. Um, but yeah if you've experienced 
wood with or working with this type of wood in the past uh, put a comment below and let me know how you liked it uh, did it work well was it used for something specific um, even send me some photos that'd be awesome now as I mentioned earlier on in this project if you haven't watched all of the other parts to this project the videos uh, that I released for this project go check them out and give a little bit more uh, context for how this tree came into my life and uh, yeah check those out there's a lot uh, that I've put out regarding this project because I got a lot of wood from it which is exciting each one of these cookie rounds will make something unique in the future and uh, I'm excited like I said to see what I do end up using them for if you're in the area if you're local to, to, to Southern California reach out if you'd be interested in having a project uh, made from one of these rounds if you want it, like a coffee table or a big cutting board or something like that I'd be happy to work with you if you're thinking about doing something like this uh, yourself with the tree that you have uh, reach out to I'll give you some tips and make sure to watch all of the other videos uh, that I've put out um, not just for this oak tree but also uh, for uh, another live edge table that I did with an ash ash tree slabbed up some uh, some slabs from an ash tree that fell in Montana um, and yeah I can give you some tips on uh, on how to get started uh, and Make sure to get yourself a good chainsaw, a good Alaskan mill, uh, definitely some wedges and a good hammer, and uh, you can do a lot. Once I had quite a few of those cookies, I went ahead and chopped up the rest of the wood that was uh, there for firewood, and I, I didn't take it all, I left some of it there for the farm itself uh, where the tree had fallen, And uh, but I took a good amount, filled up my truck one last time with uh, the slabs as well as... Uh, some firewood and uh, it was a little bit tricky getting this last bit uh, down but um, took my time I was able to chop it down when you first start a project like this and there's so much wood it can be quite overwhelming uh, to think that you'll be able to get through it all um, but if you start taking small steps you'll get there I actually heard a really good quote kind of along these lines uh, recently from Lao Tzu a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So once I got home with those slabs and some of that extra firewood, I went to stacking it and uh, tried to put out some uh, pieces of wood in between the different slabs to help the flow of air. I actually ended up coming back later on and adding two by fours and um, I had a, the help of a friend to restack it and um, Put some more equalized two by fours that uh, helped uh, create airflow so that the slabs could dry. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the wood has dried for just about a year, and most of that time I've had a tarp over top of it. Um, but it's definitely moved and cracked and and pulled apart quite a bit. And I'd heard that that was would be the case with this uh, valley oak, um, and so I'm not surprised. Um, but I am excited to see uh, what I end up doing with it. I do have one project uh, in the works right now with one of the cookies uh, that I kind of squared up and have uh, put a lot of black poxy with it. And it should be interesting to see how that turns out. Uh, so subscribe and, and uh, stay tuned for when I release those videos. I was really excited to have all of this wood uh, that I was able to harvest myself and pretty much do all of the work myself i had definitely had some help from some friends uh for stacking and whatnot but for the most part i was able to do this all myself and we'll be able to i'll be able to use some of the wood for projects in the future and uh, it's local which is also really cool um so if you are local let me know i'd love to make something for you out of this wood huge shout out to my friend clay uh who made this all possible I mentioned him in the very first video of this series, so if you didn't see that video, make sure to go watch it. Uh, but a big thank you to him uh, for allowing me to get this wood and harvest this wood from uh, his farm or where he was working. And uh, yeah, thanks Clay, appreciate it. 
Also, if you're local and you want to buy some of this wood, oh, that'd be awesome. Let me know. I'll sell you a few of these slabs or a slab or a part of a slab. Uh, if you want to make something cool, let me know. I hope to soon invest in a bigger chainsaw with a bigger Alaskan mill. Might be a few years down the road, but to be able to harvest um, even more wood and wood that will be flatter uh, right after the chainsaw cut. Because the thing with a lot of this stuff is I will have to flatten it with something else, like a router flattening jig. Um, but uh, the way that I did it was a good start for uh, being able to harvest my own wood and use a chainsaw. Uh, so I'm stoked about it. I'm really happy. So we are coming to the end of this video. And for those of you who have stuck around to the very end, I want to to thank you genuinely thank you for watching uh, the entire video and for supporting second sun woodworks with your time uh, like subscribe if you haven't already comment make sure to go follow all of my other social media if you want to support me check out my website maybe buy some merch um, I also have a couple of products uh, up for sale on there if you're interested and uh, just generally reach out and spread the woodworking love. Uh, I like creating relationships around this amazing hobby and uh, would love to chat with you. So reach out and I usually say build something cool, but maybe go cut some cool wood. You know, get out there and chop some wood. If you got a tree that f comes into your life, don't let it get just chipped up. Go use it. Chop it up into some slabs that you can make something cool with. So, right on, right on, right on. You take care of yourself. See you next time.